So a um, former NFL quarterback texted me after the draft, and I I wrote this note down, and I was I have notepads all over my house, and I found this the other day, and I didn't bring it up, and it's really interesting. So if, Tom Brady has some draft takes. <laughs> I'm not going to go there, but he said, this is not a small thing. Caleb Williams, defensive coach, Jaden Daniels, defensive coach, Drake May, defensive coach, rookie. He said, and Michael Penix in Atlanta, backup defensive coach. He said, don't be surprised if Bo Nix and J.J. McCarthy with really, really bright offensive coaches in one year, if we don't look up and go, those are the best two quarterbacks. And, and this quarterback said, man, when you come into this league, and this quarterback spoke from experience, he goes, I had a defensive coach first. He said, it's a different language. He said, Bo Nix and J.J. McCarthy are getting a master class level coaching experience that Penix isn't getting with a coordinator, Caleb's not getting, he said, this guy said, it's just, he goes, and he said this, he goes, people bang on Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson for not winning playoff games. He said, if you gave Josh Allen to Andy Reid, do you think he'd have a Super Bowl? And his thing was, of course he would. So it's just interesting is that we, we every year in this draft, John, there's a quarterback drafted below the star. And very rarely is the first quarterback taken the guy, C.J. Stroud to Bryce Young. So I'm not just saying, now, C.J. Stroud got a great coach, a great coordinator, Tank Dell, Nico Collins, they hit on draft picks. But your take on, on because Kevin O'Connell uh, 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 is highly respected. I mean, the tall Sean McVay. Sean yeah. Payton, I spent a lot of time with Sean. Sean is way too smart to be broadcasting. He has to be coaching. I... I think the best over bet in the league is Bo Nix at five and a half. Like the old line's pretty good. If the Franklin kid from Oregon works with Mims and Cortland Sutton, they have workable tight ends. Two backs I think are capable. What do you what do you make of that? That the first year rookie quarterback, the two with offensive coaches who are deeper in the draft could be the hits. Well, as I'm watching the Sean Payton press conference on my iPhone at 1030 at night in my bed next to my future wife, she's probably thinking I'm a nut. He mentioned the name multiple times in Drew Brees. And obviously getting rid of the football is a big deal. And the other thing he hammered home is like, people act like I just want to dink and dunk, like that's the offense. No, I, we want to push the ball down the field. And that is the game plan. So I, I I think the way that he talked about this guy in the press conference was a lot of love. I think he is really, really high. I think he liked his, like, his rookie class, the way he was talking. I think he's pretty excited about his team. This did not feel like, you know, I think a younger Sean, Bill Parcells guy, if, if he's ha not happy, you can feel it. He, he looked pretty excited with the group he has. Doesn't mean they're going to win 11 games. I, I'm kind of out on Washington this year. Not because I don't think Jaden Daniels isn't really talented, but they're not that good. They haven't been. They got rid of multiple D linemen. Now, you could say Chase Young's a little overrated. Monte Sweat is not. So they, they lose talent there. They just are not as talented as, obviously, the Eagles or the Cowboys. That division's hard. The Giants have some players, and Dayball, you have like he has been coaching. Now he's calling the offense. I could see Washington just having a rough season, and that's where you know, big. Of course, they should. They, they've been bad. Been bad. They're resetting. But when you're a quarterback and you don't have your play caller, and then all of a sudden is our offensive play caller good enough? Cliff Kingsbury. You see it a lot with defensive guys. They start getting pressure. Well, who who do they point the finger at? The offensive play caller. When shit goes wrong, it goes to Kyle Shanahan or Andy Reid or Sean Payton or Kyle Mc Kyle Shanahan, and they go, we'll, we'll fix it. And you go, yeah, they will. They'll figure it out. And that's where it gets difficult. I mean, New England, they feel a little bit like a shit show right yeah. now. <clears throat> you know, no team in the league has spent less cash. I, I, I've read this and heard people say this over the last decade than them. I mean, that's that speaks, one, to the brilliance of Tom Brady and Belichick building a team. But also, I think there's a knock... On the crafts can be a little cheap. Yeah. They like to do the most with the least amount. Where I think a lot of teams like the Niners, or the Cowboys, they'll spend whatever it takes to try to win. Like he's always, it wasn't just Belichick being cheap. You know, it felt like a kind of a mandate. You have this rookie head coach who's not that far removed from a, a being a player. You got this 
defensive star player who's underpaid that they had to kick out of practice. It's getting weird. Diana Rossini says, you know, they've made an offer to Matt Judon. Then he's saying, bullshit. It's just, there's a lot going on. The quarterback situation, they have this major project. We've seen a million times what history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. I, I've seen Jacoby Brissett in a scenario on a bad team 30 times in my life. We know exactly how this goes. The record's terrible. Before Halloween, right around there, it's like, we can't take this anymore. Throw the kid in. The team's awful, and it can, Jared Goff, go the wrong way. And they got lucky. McVay came in the next year and saved everything. But it goes the wrong way with a situation like that. Like, Gerard Mayo ain't calling the offensive plays. You can just see how it gets ugly. Even, again, Dan Quinn, he did inherit Matt Ryan. It's a little harder with a young quarterback who – Let's face it, Malik Neighbors looks like a bigger, thicker Odell Beckham from eight years ago. Yeah. And the other the other wide receiver went in the top 25. And Brian Kelly got a pretty good history of developing offensive players right. I mean, that's, at Notre Dame, at Cincinnati, and now here. So, I don't know. I mean, Dan Quinn got, got and I, I like Dan Quinn. He did get a job with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones on the roster. So, it's just, they were kind of a little more... They were already good. I mean, Matt Ryan had already been in the yes. playoffs. Julio totally was a star. Fair. So it's it's a lot more difficult. And I was thinking about this today. If, you know, in that Giants doc, when they tried to trade up from three to six, and Elliot Wolf essentially at the end of the day said, no, unless you give me some godfather offer, we're not going to entertain it. If I told you Drake May was with Dayball, who spent the four years, you know, with Josh Allen, you would like that scenario a lot more. Yes. But when you put a project on just a god awful team, whose coach, I mean, there's a decent it doesn't mean he doesn't know football, but he's never been remotely close to a position like this. And now the the fans are already turning on the owner because of everything that went on with the Apple documentary and the treatment of Belichick. It's just weird. It's it's hard to overcome that. I, I saw it when I was in college with Alex Smith. The Niners were just a joke. The, the, we used to joke in college: could Pete Carroll's team beat the Niners? <laughs> And it's, it was like, yeah, I mean, a lot of people would argue, hey, well, they got about 15 first rounders and this Niner team struggling to win like four games. And Alex went there and it was, his career was an embarrassment. And then he got real coaches and what happened? You're like, Alex Smith's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> and, it's, it's, and he's, he's as mature and smart of a quarterback that has come in the league the last 25 years. It is really, really hard to overcome negativity, losing a coach who's not really comfortable so I, I guess that's a long-winded way of saying, like I, I think it's so much easier when your when your head coach is the guy pulling the trigger on the play call. He he impacts the game. I, I'd never quite understand like Sirianni, like w what really is he? Doing I don't. I can't game? figure He's it not out. Not calling a yeah. play, not calling a play. You know, toughness. Like, is he, you know, let's say this about Dan Campbell. Like, obviously, he's adding an element so of toughness Harbaugh. to his team. Harbaugh's are both doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're they they're in a different category, but there are some guys, you know, is Dan Quinn calling the defense? Is Gerard Mayo calling the defense? So if they if they take that part away, so it's why when Robert Sala gets the Jets job, he immediately goes, I'm not going to be the coordinator. It's like, well, what the fuck did I hire you right. for? Just to give rah rah speeches? I mean, you, you had two good years as a coordinator, and now you're giving up the asset in which I hired you for. Part of being the head coach is you got to lead, you got to you got to motivate, you got to run practice, and Ideally, call one side of the ball. That's what all these coaches do. There's a rare group of people. Harbaugh's a great example who can dominate. Bill Parcells. Most guys have to be pretty hands-on in this modern day of football, right? The games, this is not 1987, where I, I can win most of my games 17 to 13. And if I got the toughest guys, I can beat the shit out of them. Well, you know, it, it. one of the things I do think fans don't think about a lot People tend to think there's a salary cap. So all the teams have the same money. I was like, no, they don't. The Bidwells and Stan Kroenke in the same division. Stan Kroenke is the largest holder of residential real estate in America. He got homes in every city in the country, every place in the world you can think of. It didn't matter if it's Monaco, Saint Tropez, Paris, you know, Stan. Yeah. Um, I, Steve Kimes, a buddy of mine, and worked for Michael Bidwell, and he won't badmouth him publicly, but, you know, we've had a few cocktails, and the stories are – I don't, it's not a work environment I could, I couldn't handle. I, I wouldn't have the ability to handle it. I just don't have the emotional DNA to deal with bullshit. 
a lot a lot of people don't. That's why they get sued a lot by former employees. Yeah. Which is, I wouldn't say, typical in the NFL with scouts and coaches and stuff yeah. like that. So I think fans sometimes think, well, salary cap, everybody's the same. And Stan Kroenke can write checks. Like you said, the Yorks before Levi Stadium. They didn't They didn't have that kind of money. Yeah, Mark Davis no. just can't write. You know, you have to have money in the bank to make these big free agent signings. And I, I think sometimes the Spanoses have money, but their closest allies in the league are not the wealthiest owners. They're closer to Bidwell and Mara than they are Stan Kroenke, the really, really rich guys. And I know Dean a little bit, and that they're not, they're real estate guys. They're not tech guys or, you know, Jerry, you know, not Arthur, Bl Arthur, Bl think how much money Arthur or, or Stephen Ross, the tycoon down in Miami. Yeah. But this one's for Pat.